Choosing the right HF antenna can be a daunting exercise. There's so many variables. For instance, your interest in amateur radio and what you want to do with it, the amount of space you have at home, your budget, and many, many other factors. However, I've just made it simpler. I've devised a flowchart of five must-ask questions. If you answer those questions about your circumstances, interests and abilities, then you'll have a much better idea of what antenna choice is best for you. Let's get into it. Here's the flowchart. We start at the top and the first question I have for you is do you want to work DX with your antenna? Different amateurs have different ideas as to what DX is. Certainly on different bands, DX on VHF, UHF is different from DX on HF. But for the purposes of this video, I'll define it as probably contacts of more than a thousand kilometers and definitely more than 3000 kilometers. Often people define DX as working outside your continent. But this is important with antennas because different antennas are good for different distances. So it's a yes, no question. Do you want to work DX with your antenna? And let's say that you've answered yes to that. Next question, and the answer will probably be no for most people, is are you right near salt water? Because if you've answered yes to that question, you are near salt water, then the choice is a vertical antenna. Absolutely no doubt about that. They perform better than horizontal antennas. But for other people, if you've answered no, you're not near salt water, then you've got a few other questions to answer. And so we go along to, do you have a mast a half a wavelength or taller? Um, maybe one mast, preferably ability to have two or more, or maybe even trees that can also fill the bill. Now, a half wavelength on 14 megahertz is about 10 meters or 30 feet. On 7 megahertz or 40 meters, it's double that length. So about 20 meters or 66 feet, which is quite a formidable mast. So the answer in a lot of cases will be no. Um, whether you've got a tall mast or not also affects your antenna choice. And if you've answered no, then you go over to the next question, which is, are you willing to have radials? That's because with most vertical antennas, particularly shorter antennas, you do need to have radials for good performance. And if the answer is yes, it's fine to have radials and you can read about whether you want them to be elevated or buried. Anyway, if the answer is yes, then a vertical antenna is a good choice for you. And that can be something like a ground plane, a quarter wavelength ground plane with radials. Now, if you don't want to or can't have radials, then that restricts your antenna choice. And if you follow the arrow, you can see it goes back up to, do you want to work DX? And again, you've got a yes, no question. Now, this could put you in a loop. So if we follow that again, right near saltwater, no, have mast half wavelength or taller, no, willing to have radials, no, then you're back to the start. So something has got to give here. Anyway, let us supposing that you do have a mast a half wavelength or taller. Well, then you've got some extra choices. Um, if you've answered yes to that, then a horizontal dipole, uh, horizontal antenna, half wavelength from end to end, that's a half wavelength high, that can be a very efficient antenna for working DX. It gives you a nice low angle of radiation and you don't need to worry about radials. You just need to have the wire high up in the air and you'll get good results with DX. So 
Now, if we look at some of the other options we haven't looked at, if you are forced to compromise, like if you can't put up a mast, a half wavelength or taller, if you can't lay radials, then it's going to be difficult for you to work DX. Not impossible. There are some other options, which I'll talk about later on. But anyway, let us suppose that you don't have a mast, half wavelength or taller. You can't put up radials. So we're back here up to no one to work DX. Now, let's say that you just want anything to get on air. You're not so worried about working DX every time you get on the radio. There may still be times that you work DX, but it will be harder. So let's answer no. A lot of your contacts will be shorter distances within in your own state or country within a thousand, maybe within 3000 kilometers. Now you still can get on air on HF and have a lot of fun with that. Um, there's some programs like in the United States, worked all states, uh, parks on the air, worldwide flora and fauna, where you can have a lot of fun making shorter distance contacts. Anyway, our next question is, do you have at least a quarter wavelength of horizontal space um, on your land? Now, if the answer is yes, then you can certainly do something with a horizontal antenna. Um, okay, a quarter wavelength is not quite as long as you need for a full-sized flat top half wavelength dipole, but you can still compromise and still get reasonable performance. For instance, you could have an inverted V where you've got one pole in the middle of your yard and the wire slopes down. And even if you've got only maybe a third of your wavelength along the ground, then you could fit in the wire, even if you have to bend the ends of a horizontal of a dipole. That's okay. Um, you could bend the ends in. Another option is you could have a loading coil near the ends and you could have your wire not much more than say a quarter wavelength end to end have loading coils at the ends and have little tails on the end and your bandwidth is a bit narrower but you can still have quite good results with a shortened dipole or you could use another antenna like a doublet provided it's about a third the wavelength on its lowest frequency um, you've got open wire feed line, a balanced antenna coupler at the bottom, that will give you good performance on multiple bands. And again, you can bend the wires in. So there's quite a lot of choices that you have if you can accommodate a quarter wavelength horizontal space. Now, if you can't accommodate a quarter wavelength horizontal space, but you've got a little bit of yard space, then there's a few other things that you can consider. Um, see where I've got no, follow the line, and you might consider an inverted L. Um, you've got some of the antenna is vertical, some is horizontal. That will be good for a mix of local and DX contacts. A lot of people use that type of antenna on 160 meters if they don't have much space. But for even 80 or 40 meters, that will work fine if, if, you, if an inverted L is an option on those bands. Uh, a loaded dipole, I've mentioned before, with the loading coils near the end. Um, a small transmitting loop, that is another possibility. That can be really small. It might only be one and a half or so meters wide and operate on the HF band. But if you can put up something bigger outside, I would suggest considering it. And that's why I've got the arrow going to the vertical. Um, now, a vertical outside without much in the ray, ray of good radials will work. It might be quite noisy on receive. You might not get very good distances because if you look at antenna modeling, the performance will not be particularly good. People say that a vertical can radiate poorly in all directions and especially for something that's only a quarter wave or even worse, it's got traps and not much in the way of radials, then that can definitely be true. But at least you've got something to be on the air. If you look at the radiation patterns, the low angle is quite poor. 
there'll be a bit of a lobe at medium to high angles. The signal strength probably still won't be as good as a full size dipole, but it is something and depending on how you set it up, you may be able to get it to operate on several bands. And it could even be quite efficient on the higher HF bands. So that's why I've got the arrow going to a vertical if other options are not so appealing to you. So this is a look at various antennas. I haven't covered everything. Hope they give you some ideas. And if you've had experiences with any of them, or if you think I should have asked some other questions, then please let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and are starting out or know someone starting out in ham radio, consider my books on the topic. In the USA, consider Ham Radio Get Started. And in Australia, the Australian Ham Radio Handbook. These books give you ideas on facets of amateur radio, what you can do with it, and the basics of setting up a station. There's also a lot of detail on making contacts, something that beginners often stumble with. Books are available on Amazon by searching their titles, or you can learn more from my website, vk3ye.com.